Welcome everybody to the S and D podcast on the Schmuck Sports Radio. Uh, Dan here with Steve. Um, this week's song was "With a Vengeance" by Division One Point One. What's up, guys? What's going on? Another fun-filled week for you guys. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of hockey. It's that low point of the sports season, right before baseball, and there's the hockey and the baseball. It's I mean, the end hockey of the month basketball. of February. It's the yeah. end of the month of February. Nothing's yeah. going on. Uh, yeah. Combine's the beginning of over. March. Yeah, so we're going to have a fun-filled week. Um, we're going to talk about the Knicks and Nets. Um, the Knicks had a crushing loss to the Heat, but they're looking to bounce back, which they're being resilient. A couple injury bugs there. The Nets really haven't really played much, so it's they played a tough game against the Bulls, so we're going to get to that in a bit. Um, this week, the uh, Rangers are finally kicking butt. Their slump is uh, s- almost over. That yeah, we'll get swinging. into them later. And the I Islanders guess. are finally winning at home, so that's good. And the Devils are finally realizing life after Marty right now, and that's not looking too pretty. So it's, It was an interesting couple of weeks. Um, past week for the s- local sports. Um Pretty boring besides the hockey and basketball. Uh, we will also tonight talk a little bit about the, uh, we're going to talk a little NCAA for you guys. Uh, we're actually going to set up for everybody on ESPN.com. Uh, we're going to set up a bracket for everybody, an s and podcast show bracket, uh, which is open to the public, so hopefully we get a lot of people to join that. Yeah, um, it's going to be free. It's going to be fun. Get your friends to join, and it's just for bragging rights and fun. Right now, we don't really have a budget, of course, for uh, a money league at the moment. And we don't want to be held responsible, so figured a free league would be fun. Um, we have that. Uh, also, check out schmucksports.com. A lot of great articles up there. Um, I know Keith's been working very hard at that. Um, he recently put one up about uh, N1 Sports, uh, Darius Hayward Bay. Um, there was another one up there recently. I know he posts our show for us. Thanks again to that. Thanks again for being on our show a couple of weeks ago as well, Keith. Um, we had a great time doing that. Um, Keith also has been, uh, writing for this other site called late round quarterback.com. Um, they actually have what's called the great assumption draft of 2013 it has to do basically with all of football and they basically just draft player is based on what happened this past season slash if it was the beginning of a new football season just to fill the void of having no football um we have a lot of fun filled stuff to talk about tonight uh we also have a lot of our future stuff to talk about this week so let's go ahead and get the show started Welcome back, guys, to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, that was Division 1.1 with With a Vengeance. Uh, check out our Instagram page, by the way. Yes. Um, see an awesome picture uh, I got sent this morning from the, the drummer, Brian. Um, they're actually in the process of videoing their first video of one of their songs. And as you can see, Brian's wearing a certain T-shirt. Yes. Looks pretty snazzy on Brian. Uh, thank you for that to him. Shout out to him for that. Um, and the band, of course. Check them out. They have a lot of cool events coming up. But I'll sh- I'll sh- tell you guys about a couple of them later on. Um, we're going to talk some hockey now. Uh, yeah, it was a, it's a, it been an interesting week. A yeah. lot of drama, per se. The um, Islanders finally finding ways to win at home, two in a row. The Islanders uh, last night beat the Canadians on yeah. the 5th of March. Um, and... You can see that some of those bounces they weren't getting for the couple of weeks before this are yes. finally starting to go their way, so to say. Yeah, um, and it's it's finally nice to see them getting some home cooking. Last week when we were talking, they have yet probably won two home games the whole entire year to that point yep. last week. So 
it's been a uh, very shaky start for the Islanders on, on the home ice, but they played uh, really well. Who they who they beat on uh, Saturday? On Sunday, Sunday they Sunday. beat the Senators. They beat the Sens, that's shootout. right, shootout. And, and Tavares made a sexy move to win the game. The game was pretty boring. John Tavares with 40% John Tavares played that yeah, game. Yeah, that's well, why. more like 80. But John Tavares made a pretty move right, on I'll the take, shootout. I'll take 80% John Tavares after nine, over 90% of the players in the league. Well, yeah, because he's a superstar now. He's becoming a monster. Um, a player that the Islanders have been looking for since uh, to, um Pot, I mean, uh, Trottier and... and uh, He's Patty a guy to build him on. That's what it is, so, basically. Good for Tavares. Our man crush is doing things right now. Um, the Islanders' goaltending has been solid. The Islanders have just been... been playing well. Their defense is playing solid as well at the moment. So they're becoming more of a team, per se. And that's very good to see because a young team like that can get discouraged and everything like that. And they start piling up losses because they don't stick together as a team. I know, I know he doesn't listen, but shout out to Lou uh, Wisniewski. Apparently, he had to go back to Slovakia for a couple of days because of family tragedy. So I hope all is well with that. Of course, the team is miss going to miss him for a couple of games. Yes, um, but they stepped up. They played well against the Canadians, like I said. Without him, uh, they take on the Rangers on the seventh tomorrow. Um, yes, and the Rangers are streaking right now as well. We'll get back to the Rangers in a b- moment. Tomorrow is going to be a big stepping stone for the Rangers, uh, for the yeah, Islanders. I'm sorry. It's yeah. they're going to have to want to protect their home ice against the division and their biggest rival, the Rangers. And Where, as of right now, they're two points out of a playoff spot. Yes. Which the Rangers hold that final playoff spot Correct. in the Eastern Conference. So it's even bigger in a game standing it's a, Yeah, it's a three big three-point game right now, per se. Um, it, it, and they also have to protect home ice. There's going to be a lot of Ranger fans out at the Coliseum Ice on uh, tomorrow, Thursday, on the 7th. So the honors are the player. Hopefully, the players don't shy down from the big pressure of the big lights of playing the range. A team like the Rangers the, for a the big good game. thing about it is, about the Canadians game on the fifth was that it was a big game because the Canadians are number one in the Eastern Conference. Correct. And you scored six goals against their number one goalie. Correct. And also, I was at the game. It was basically about seventy thirty. Canadian fans because they travel well. Props they travel well, and they they do have a lot of Long Islanders. Yes, because they are the Canadians. They're one of the original six. Um, they're going to show up their fans, and they're going to be loud, and they're always loud. And props to them for all that, of course, always showing their support. Great fan base. Do they still have the amount of uh, New York uh, from New Yorkers from Long Island on their team anymore? Not so much anymore, right? The only American I really know on their team is um, Gianta. Yeah. Okay. So there, there isn't I, a big they don't, I don't think they have the, the New Yorkers I- anymore. They no longer have the Long Islanders that they had for a while, and that's always the reason why they did so well on the Coliseum ice. They well, it wasn't just that. They also they do a lot of uh, a lot of the Canadian teams do a lot of um, what they do is they do a lot of trips because mm-hmm. a lot of times when the Canadian teams come to the come to the states to play they do like little road trips like basically montreal right now is on a decent little road trip um i think they just they played boston in boston and then they played the islanders before going home i believe it is um i'm not 100 percent sure what their next game is actually the next game is in carolina on the 7th uh so basically they've probably set up a little group sale with the teams that they're going to and they took the buses and they're going and then you get the choice of which ones you get to go to and which ones you don't go to, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, it, it's good to see the passion that Canadian hockey players have. Uh, hockey fans, uh, yeah. hockey fans so everybody's Canadian hockey league majority other than lazy Russians. Um, anyway, uh, so that's good to see that the Islanders showed up and beat the Canadians, of the, like we said, the number one seed in the conference right now. So... Kudos to them for that, and hopefully they step step it up and play the Rangers just as well. It's going to be one of those great interconference, interdivision yes uh, mm-hmm. matchups. Classic. I'm expecting one of the classic Island the Ranger games tomorrow night. Both teams are playing well. Both teams are playing hard. Uh, it's going to be interesting because we're going to start moving on to the Rangers now at this yeah. time. Um, 
I think this. I really think the stall injury is going to come back to on oh, him. Yeah. If you haven't seen, um, get nothing well you could soon. do. Get well soon, Mark Stall. Uh, coming from Islander fans, uh, automatically get well soon. Nothing he could have done. It was a double deflection right into his eye. Um, I know they say he's out indefinitely, but you got to figure his season's over because until the swelling goes down, they can't really see what happened mm-hmm. to his eye itself. Um, it's a freak injury. I remember Brian Burrard many years ago got hit with in the eye stick. with a stick. On yeah, a, it's a little bit different. That's um, it's rough. Just get well soon, uh, Mark Stahl. But I think it's going to hurt them. I really think he's going to hurt them he, because he's, he's the one of the better the quarter, but he's one of the better def- demon on the Rangers. But today they did pick up uh, Roman Hammer. Like, granted, he's no Mark Stahl in uh, youth and skill, but. A he's a Roman solid ha- veteran yeah. player who Ro- knows what Roman he's Roman Hamerlich's going to be a good power, uh, good uh, defenseman for the guys like for Mark Diz- um for uh, Mike Gil- Dizzato and uh, Gilroy and Girardi. Uh, he'll be just a good overall defenseman, old old school leadership I, type of I role. I always liked him on the Islanders. I was yeah. always a he's, Roman Hamerlich fan. Very, he's very steady, so he's going to help out the younger guys. Um, he'll he'll probably be slotted with Girardi. I would not be shocked, or unless they move. McDonough with Girardi, which I can see. I wouldn't see. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. Put McDonough and, then, and Girardi, your best two. You put yeah. together, and then have Hammerlick with Delzato, because um, Delzato is still still developing, and he's still a clown. He will still make stupid mistakes. So I could see them giving him more of Roman Hammerlick and letting him f- uh, play freely, per se. But the Rangers, um, they're playing out of their skull right now. They're playing, finally playing the way that the New York Ranger fans and everybody in hockey expected them to play. Uh, Hank was, Hank Henrik has been playing well um, the last few games. Nash has finally been Nashy. Cor- yeah, you know, quotation marks. It's going to be very interesting to see who plays goalie against the Islanders because um, Biron actually is I think it's like 14-0-2 in Guess his last so. like 16 games against the Islanders. Wow. Right. So it'll be very interesting to see, especially because they play Friday also and, against and, Ottawa. Uh, yeah. So I, I can see him going Biron, who lost that, the game on Valentine's Day. Yeah. But I can also see him going Lundqvist because of the circumstances of being a big division game. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, I think Henrik's going to be playing tomorrow night. I, I think it's one of those games where you have to play Henrik, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Biron because of the numbers. I mean, even if you get a point out of Biron, yeah. a, a shootout loss, it's still a point. But. Yeah, yeah um, you're, pr- you're right, but I think Hank's going to be in net. Um, the Rangers also hit the r- injury bug quite hard this week. Yeah, um, but they're getting everybody back. Yeah, the, um, with so we just mentioned Stall a few minutes ago. Um, Brad Richard just almost got paralyzed Can by I, Coletta. Coletta should be out of the league for that hit because the way Richards was falling. Yeah, when he hit him, you can't hit him like that. The, thank I, God, I understood if he was still up and stuff and was and hit him. Yeah, that would have been fine. Honestly, check him into honestly, the boards. think. Uh, Brad Richards definitely has some guardian angel oh, watching over him. Oh, the because, fact that he didn't break his neck. Thank God he didn't break his neck. That that was brutal. Kolev should have been thrown out of the league because of that. That was very bad. Um, and people actually thought he dove. They clearly whoever he thought, was slipping. He turned yeah, around and slipping. But whoever slipping. thought it was stupid and think, oh yeah, let's just do that to just sake to like, draw a penalty. You're absolutely out of your mind. Oh, yeah. And you don't know hockey because he could have easily almost died. What gave him credit was he a little ho- stupid hockey player. He came back later and tried to play, but the Rangers were like, no way, you're playing. Well, he played a little bit the rest of that game. Yeah. Um, that was a solid win for the Rangers because for yes. some reason the last like two minutes of the game and into overtime, they just went stupid and started yeah, taking all these Typical Rangers. Typical they Rangers. Just kept, they, they basically handed Buffalo the game. Yeah, and Buffalo didn't take advantage. And they Henrik, had a five on three. And Henrik was on his head again, and the the Rangers are finally playing well. And then last night, wait, was it last night? Yeah, last night against Philly. Against Philly, they opened it up against Philly, and Nash had two goals, and Callahan had two goals. Yeah, but Nash the, is finally starting to step up as the hockey player that everybody expected out of him when they traded him from uh, Columbus. Um, Nash. Um, I still think uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they come, how they come out without stall, though. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but an interesting stat: most of um, most of his goals, Nash, has come in the third period in, during oh, yeah. crunch time. He's one of the most clutch so, players in the league, and if he right played now, on that is amazing to see how clutch he is and how well every time the Rangers need a big goal. What it's proving is that if Columbus ever had a goaltender, they would have been a good team. Yeah. Because the fact that they always went down three goals to go into the third period. He always had a third period oh, goal. Oh, yeah, of course. Every time you check the Columbus Blue Jackets the past couple of years, Rick Nash scored in the third period. But the fact that they were down three goals and he only had one didn't really help at all. So, yeah, it's great to see Nash finally um, getting a goal streak that we were desperately waiting for. Um, so that's he's, been good. He's he, he's on his hot streak right no now. Ma- no matter so, what. Team and right and he's a great for. power forward. He reminds me a lot of Yarmir Yager. And the size and skill wise, he's not the he scorer. He has some of the best hands in the league. Oh, you can't he's you can't stop him if league. you get him going towards the end net. There's there, no way. There are two Rangers that I will always like. Him it's and Callahan. Him and Callahan. Callahan's probably, if not my f- one of my top three favorite players in the whole league. Yeah. If not top two, because Tavares is one. So if not, he's number two on my list as best players in the league. Absolutely. Um. As for the Devils, the Devils are finally Devil fans, and the Devils are seeing what life is going to be without Marty Brodeur. Hopefully, Marty gets back healthy soon for them to make a playoff push. But you better, the, you better draft a goalie first round. Yeah, Johan Hemberg is definitely not the future. Future, well, obviously he's not. He's pretty old. But who was the guy who came in yesterday? Somebody came in uh, yesterday. Um, I forgot what his name was. I'm gonna look that up. Um. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't get to watch the Devil game, but Hemberg, they've been playing. The Devils have been fighting at least in most of the games, but they're still playing without Marty is really hurting them right now, and it it, it really is a shame. But that's what happens when you are 40 years old and supposed to play every night. Unfortunately, his back is going to be breaking down and everything like that he's is going to. 40 hurt. years old. He's played how many games in this league? Bi- a billion. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. Um, he has every single New Jersey well, Devil yeah, record. He is the greatest New Jersey Devil of all time. He is Mr. Devil. Granted that they're going to give that to... Uh, the, even though they gave that to Kenny Danico back when. But essentially, it is Marty Brodor. He is Mr. Devil. He he is the best devil ever to live. So, did you... Oh, f- no question, Matt. I'm still... Um, it's loading right now, the team name. Um, so the Devils just have to keep at bay and get points in overtime. And whoever came in yesterday was a no name because he's <laughs> not even on the roster. Oy. <laughs> anyway, um, it doesn't matter because he's not really gonna be playing unless they get shut out. Um, but the Devils, the Devils are just—they're still pesky, but without Brodor, they're missing their heart. Keith Kincaid, or however the hell he's pronounce that 23 years old from Farmingdale oh wow you don't say yeah good for him got his first NHL action last night uh gave up a goal 13 uh 12 saves about 26 minutes congratulations to him on his first play time in the NHL congrats um I mean sorry to tell you they have him under his prospect list but honestly I've never heard of him so I don't think he's gonna be anything uh, but maybe he'll go out there one day and prove me wrong. You well, like know. Clemenson back in the day. Right now he's now he's stinking in Florida. But hey, actually, he's not even, I don't even think he's in Florida anymore. Really? He was he was on the he no. Was they the traded st- him because oh. they have that young guy Markov, who's actually gotcha. the starter now. Gotcha. Because Theodore just got hurt. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So Clemenson's basically. I think his career's over. Look I think at, he retired. Look at look at you. If I remember correctly. No, he was the starting goalie last year in the Yeah, playoffs. I know. He was the starting goalie last year. Huh. But Jose Theodore makes a lot of money, so you make him the starting goalie. Anyway, the Devils have to step up in the win column, but they are playing really tough, and they're just having tough breaks because they don't have their heart and soul, like I mentioned before, in Marty Brodeur. So it's pretty much a sink and swim kind of week coming up for the three local teams. Um, we're gonna. It's gonna be another lukewarm feeling towards this week. Um, there's gonna be a few, t- uh, call, at least one team that we're gonna be happy about, and the other two, or th- hopefully all three, have a good 
week. Within the next week, the idea is that... We're going to know who's going to be in the playoff picture. Right. You know which teams are legit and which aren't because you're at that point. Um, while we are talking local hockey, I just want to let everybody know, all the Islander fans, that next week we will also be recording on Wednesday. Yes. As we are this week. Uh, the Islanders actually have a couple of... Uh, Spend the night with the Islanders at Friday's type event things. And next Thursday at the Fridays in Levittown, the Islanders will okay. be holding a road game, watch the road game with them event at okay. Fridays. And yes. the S&D podcast show will be making yeah, an we're appearance. Gonna, yeah, we're going to be there. Um, just check it out. Me and the current uh, old school Islander, range of Islander players, which should be cool. One thing we're also going to do is we're going to ask some of you your opinions and record it yeah. on our phones. And we're going to actually play it on our show next week. Absolutely. Uh, not next week, the following yes. week. In two weeks, we'll play some things mm-hmm. for you guys. Um, so we'll find some people. Say hi to us. Uh, we don't bite. Um, we're there to hang out with you guys. Um, and we're going to ask you how you feel about the team and things like that. And then we'll play some of them on the air for you guys. Um, that's just that kind of shout out. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Around the league, if you don't Okay, know. absolutely. I mean, we might well, as well. Black, well Black we Hawks, might as well talk Blackhawks. Congrats. It's, that's, it's amazing how great they are playing. And they haven't lost a regulation. Game goal. in regulation. They haven't gotten a game without a point yet. Um, They're just playing out of their school, and it's great to see. What was it? I think last night was 29. 29 games back to last yeah, season with a point. Had, yeah. And they're playing out of their. They're what? I think they have like twenty three games played right now this year. I think it is. Uh, correct. Um, the NHL record for most games without a loss in regulation is thirty five by the Flyers in the seventies. Seventies. I think it was the seventy nine eighty Flyers. Okay. But I'm gonna make my prediction right now. That they're gonna go into the pot. They're gonna basically. They're not gonna go on this streak forever. Of course. Eventually, they're going to lose in regulation and not have a point. They're going to lose to a team that no one expects. They're going to lose. Not just that, but they're going to be a one and out team. You think so? Because yeah. they're they're wasting all their mojo now. Yeah. We'll see about that. Because because they they yeah. are a veteran quote unquote a veteran team. Granted, they're most still still kind of young. They did win a cup, so they know they, how to. They play have the, the experience, cup. yes, but the fact that it always comes to like just like football. Yeah. The hottest teams hottest always team. win. In well, the NHL, basically, it's really the same thing well, recently. If you think about it, it, you're right on that standpoint of things, of the hottest team. But it is a shortened season, so they are going to have a leg up of being hot the whole entire year. So it's going to be okay. So who knows? Um, It's going to be interesting to see what happens with them. Um, I know they're playing the Avalanche tonight. Which, in a minute, I'm going to get to that for a second. Okay. Because i got to yell at NBC Sports. Well, i got to yell at NBC Sports for it. We'll get to that in a minute. So um, the Blackhawks this week play the Avalanche tonight. Let's see if we can figure out which game they're going to lose it in. Avalanche tonight. Uh, and then they're in Colorado on Friday. Oh, so home and home. Home and home with them. Okay. Off on Saturday. Do, do, Sunday, do, home against do, Edmonton. Do, do, another win. Do, 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 Tuesday. Do, 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 Monday and Tuesday, they're off. Do, 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 and then do, next week when do, we record do, again, do, do, they'll be do, off again. Do, 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 do. And then next Thursday, they play in Columbus. Do, 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 I'm going to say do, 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 Edmonton comes into do, 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 Chicago do, 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 and beats them. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Edmonton's one of the hottest teams in the yeah, league right now. Yeah, maybe, but they're not being them. I'm going to say. They're going on the feet of the whole season. Lock it up. No, I'm kidding. But they have a shot. That would be pretty awesome if they did go on the feet. Of and then go oh and one, in the, in one and done. Yeah, but that ain't happening. They're Alrighty. My bone to pick with NBC Sports is how their quote-unquote Wednesdays, uh, they show a hockey game basically every Monday Tuesday and Wednesday night okay. on NBC Sports, the, the network. Gotcha. Um, and their quote-unquote Wednesday night game is, is rivalry. rivalry night. Can somebody tell me when the Colorado Avalanche and the Chicago Blackhawks were ever a rivalry? They're in a division together, and no, they're, they're just hot. They're not in the same division? No. 
I'm pretty sure they're not in the same division. I'm quite certain. I pre- I thought they were. I'm almost positive they're not. Nope. nope. Not? Okay. They've just had playoff rivalries with the Red Wings then. No. Yeah, they've okay. had rivalries with the Red Wings. Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. They just want to show the Blackhawks. Leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, Is there any actual rivalry game though tonight? Yes. Okay. Toronto and Ottawa play each other. In- uh, who cares? Hockey sucks. Uh, Canada sucks. Yeah, um, I know that. But but, still. but they don't they care. They want they want the American ducks, viewers. And they got Ducks and the Coyotes later. Oh boy. And that's a that's a division. No, I, I don't I don't blame I don't blame NBC because the Blackhawks are the story right now and they are going with the hot hand. Granted, it's not a rivalry, but they're the idiots to call it rivalry week. It's honestly a good play for them and to pr- actually promote the game of hockey on a team that is so st- stupid hot right now that that it's going to be yeah, fun to watch. But it doesn't matter. Even if the Blackhawks didn't win one game all year so far, they would have been using the Blackhawks tonight because that's what NBC Sports do. They use the Rangers, the Bruins, the Red Wings, and the Blackhawks. Good, yeah. As long as one of those four teams are playing, they will show that game. Yeah, because it's the marquee markets in the NHL. You almost well, never show... You almost never show any other team. Well, because that's the marquee market. And they, and they claim themselves being a NHL channel that will show every team. Well, that's a lie. But exactly. the Islanders are already on it twice, so we can't complain. Twice? Oh, that's right. They were on it twice. That's and then when they go to the playoffs. I'm putting it down right now. <laughs> Islanders are going to the playoffs this year. Okay. You'll hear it. You heard it here first. The Islanders are making the playoffs. All right. I... They still got to show me a lot more than two games winning on the road on at home ice for them to be considered a playoff team. Uh, but I, I I don't want them to get embarrassed and lose in the first round. So. Oh, I don't think they would. I would. I can because they play better on the road. Well, yeah. So, are they going to win a Stanley Cup this year? No, no I'm not saying. That. No, no, no. I know. I'm saying they're making. the I playoffs. just want to get out of the first round. And I don't even think they're going to be able to make the playoffs. But I'm the big mighty jinx, so hopefully my doubting helps out for once. But for all those years we doubted era. the Giants. No, it's a little different December. scenario. It's a little bit different <laughs> scenario. The Giants at least will get us to the playoffs. The Islanders haven't won a playoff game nor get to the playoffs on a regular basis. So there are different categories of fandom and awesome. Anyway, that is this week's hockey. Hope you enjoy. Uh, if you guys, if we see you guys around the Coliseum, I'm sure Steve's going to a bunch of games. I know I'm going to the Island Ranger game. I'll be at the um, Island Ranger game, and then they're on the road, and then oh yeah, then that's right. Be Tomorrow back. wraps up the seven nope. game home. Saturday stand. wraps up the seven game home. Stand. Oh, you're they not play at one o'clock on Saturday. I got gotcha. you. So, so you have work. All right. So that's our hockey this week. Um, hope uh, keep hitting us with uh, Twitter questions and Facebook questions. And just in-person questions. And uh, we'd be hope to see you around the Coliseum Ice. And, and also next Thursday. Next Thursday at Fridays. Next Thursday. Uh, thanks for listening to the hockey segment. Um, talk some basketball. s d Podcast is no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Hockey League or any of its affiliates. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show. Uh, Steve here. And, oh, it's Dan here, and Steve's over there across, for the, across from me. It's okay, I always forget who I yeah. am, too. Uh, <laughs> we're sponsored by, uh, we're part of the Schmuck Sports Radio Network, uh, and this week's song was With a Vengeance from Division 1.1. Uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna shift sports, and now we're gonna talk about the local basketball teams. Um, a quiet. We week. can do some around the league too, and we're gonna do some around the league as well, as co- of course. But it's let's start off with the Nets because they only played theoretically two games since we uh, last spoke about them, and they're on the middle of a two-game losing streak. Yes, they're in that portion of their season again. But it's okay. Right now they're playing. We're that time recording. Of the month. Yeah, we're recording on a Wednesday night, and they're playing the Bobcats, who they should really beat. But they're the Bobcats are holding them right now in check. So, but there's still a quarter left remaining in the game that anything can happen. 
Um, the Nets lost in Chicago, which a lot of teams, unless you're the Heat or the Knicks, or well, that's not true. Uh, the Knicks uh, lose uh, to them too. No, but but you know what I mean, like a, a quote unquote elite team. Okay. Would lose. It's a, it would be a tough game for anybody to play, and which is amazing because they don't have Derrick Rose. Yeah, it really is amazing for that. Um, so they they lost to them, and who was the team they played previous to the Bulls? Dallas. The there you go. There you go. It was two rough home ga- uh two road games, and they lost both of them. Um, they f- they fought hard in both, as you can see from the stats, but. There, that just shows that they're not there yet, quote unquote. Well, last week we were team. talking, we were talking how they were a game out from yeah. behind the next. Um, but, but you know what I mean, like quote unquote, there to be the team to beat on the road per se. Um, they're still going to be a playoff team, and they're still going to make the playoffs. But they have they have to win, start learning how to win some games on the road, like hard at hard places like uh, Dallas and at Chicago. If the season were to end right now. Not including tonight. Yep. They would be the five seed. Which is very respectable. Playing Chicago. Ouch. Yeah. That's very respectable for them. The Knicks would be the three, by the way. All right, I'll take that. Hey, you get out from playing the Heat in the first two rounds. Yeah. So that's the key, right? Yeah. Um. So basically, that's how they would be right now. They are uh, 34 and 26 going into tonight. Which keeps them at 11 games behind the Heat. Of course, yeah. we don't expect them to. No, the Heat. Bearing, the heat ma- now, bearing the crazy injuries to the Heat, they're yeah, not. The, yeah. the Heat are on that run. That They're ready to go. They're, yeah, they're ready to go. They're not messing around anymore. And they're, they're already sized up for their second rings. Yeah. They're, that's, a, that's how I'm going to say it right now. They're, they're really kicking butt right now and finally getting into gear. <laughs> um, the Knicks had us teased a little bit. But it was, of course, too good to be true. Well, they played the Heat. Yeah. It was, we finally, I thought we were going to have another game that we beat them by double-digit points. Silly me. Um, No, nah, but the Heat finally woke up and played well. And a lot of people were joking because LeBron did change his shoes. That it was the shoes, not the actual Heat. That helped oh, him win. well, in that <laughs> case, whoa. Whoa. It was like, it was like somebody... S- like Mike, somebody yeah, was, go steal his shoes. It was like, uh, nah, that, and it was like uh, Space Jam when uh, they drank Michael's special water <laughs> um, kind of thing. Wow, you uh, just threw that out there. Yeah. I, I, Ladies I and gentlemen, bomb, we just had a s- Space Jam reference in our podcast. Pipe bomb. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, the Knicks just stopped playing. Um, it was a little bit more of the Heat playing suffocating defense. and the Knicks You mean they played Heat basketball? Yeah, yeah. We we had a shot, and then J.R. Smith just decided to be uh, jackass J.R. Smith. And how about we drive to the hole when you're shooting three from 14 at the three-point line? Um, yeah, and then tweet about it and get on fans because you suck. He's he's on my shit list this week. He's so annoying. Like, beginning of the year, oh, yeah, yeah, he changed. Oh, my, awesome. Now he's just the same asshole. He's back to himself. Yeah, like, all right, we get it. You like to party and you like to quote unquote vamp all day. Maybe, maybe you work on your three pointers and or drive to the hole. He's a good player. He's gonna be a key component to our team. But stop being a jerk and get it done. Also, um, unfortunately, Mello, we won't. We we have a. We did win the other night. We were down by uh, twenty points. What What did you think of what Woodson said? That was his fault? That it was his fault he got yeah. re Because Melo felt injured before the game and said, I can't play tonight. Woodson played him. Woodson said, you're playing. Um, I think it was more of a scapegoat situation because he looked pretty good to me. And he just slipped and fell. And he's like, screw this. I'm really not feeling well. Right. Like, he, he it was, it was, in order it probably was, it was, Woodson knows he was hurt. But it was he was fine to play because Melo was gonna be like, yeah, I'm playing, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he like pretty much got sniped by himself, and he fell down in the middle of the court. And then he's like, yep, yeah, I shouldn't be playing. And that See was you guys be- later. Yeah, so that was just a freak thing. It was nice to see those 70 points from the bench Monday yeah, night they against came back. the Cavaliers. Yeah. Uh, nice victory. And the Cavs normally own us for some odd reason. They just have our number every time we play them. 
And I would like to say welcome back, Kyrie Irving. Finally, I lost last week in fantasy basketball <laughs> because you decided not to play for three games. Three games all year you take off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but... Yeah, they're going to be a good team to be in a few years. Um, yeah, when LeBron has three rings and goes back there. Yeah. They'll be a fun team with to watch. Kyrie. Um, Kyrie and LeBron? <laughs> yeah, unstoppable. Um, Wade's going to be officially completely broken down. He's not going to. LeBron's not going to want to be there. He's going to go to Cleveland. Anyway, yeah. Th- it was, thank God the Knicks came back and won the 20 point game from the Cavs because a two game losing streak after losing a heartbreaking loss at the Garden to the Heat. It was just was going to be very negative around the area and how the Knicks have been sucking and yada, yada, yada. So thank God the Knicks won and pulled it out because the heat on Melo would have been a very, very, very dangerous thing because a lot of people thought he just backed out because he quit, quote-unquote, quit on the team, which he actually didn't, but a lot of people are thinking that because that's the reputation Melo has been given the last few years, which is not... Earned, it could be earned to some degree and not in other ways, but I don't know. Like it's a very ske- sketchy situation, and hopefully Melo gets back healthy in time for the playoff run because he's been hurt a lot this year, and that's not good to see for our superstar scorer. So hopefully Melo gets back with his knee, and then we make a good playoff run, um, like we we're supposed to. So, It'll be interesting to see what I'm happens. excited. I'm going to the Nick game on third. On no, they're playing the Thunder tomorrow, and then they're playing the Jazz on Saturday. I'm going to be going to the game on Saturday. So if anybody's at the game and then knows us and listens to the show, stop by and say hi to me and my girlfriend. We're both going to be there. So I'm excited for that. That's my Christmas gift. So hopefully yeah. the Knicks, hopefully the Knicks uh, show up and give me a good Christmas gift. Shit. Gonna get you the Thunder game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Nicole. I didn't yeah, mean that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just messing. He, she obviously knows that. But yeah, <laughs> um, we're gonna shift our gears. Do you have any other NBA league wine? Well, I want to talk a little about uh, the Bucks and how they might be one of the most underrated teams in basketball right now. Yeah, they're not only are they a pretty decent team, they have probably arguably. The best, quote unquote, real life backcourt because you know yeah. LeBron plays every position with Monty Ellis and uh, and Jennings. Bruce Jennings. And I think if they could get a big on that team, imagine, yeah. imagine that team with a nice big. Yeah, that would be they, a very solid team. They could be a team front. to be reckoned with. Um, apparently, they actually are a team that has already said they're going all in for Josh Smith after the season. Smith, yeah, uh, who will be a free agent this year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, they're a very interesting team to watch. Um, the other team that's playing very well recently is actually who you're going to be seeing Saturday, the, the Utah Jazz. Jazz. They've been, been playing, playing well. very well. Uh, they actually own the last spot of the playoffs right now for the Western Conference. Um, playing well. Um, I don't even know who's on that team, but they're playing well. I think Derek Favors is on that team. Yeah. And it's that, a young under. And then they have team. the kid from Butler. Yeah. The kid who almost hit the game winner in the finals a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, Hayward. Hayward. Gordon Hayward. Um, yes, I just had a Butler college basketball reference. So, yeah, it's been a typical NBA league. The Heat are on that amazing 15-game winning streak. They are just look unstoppable, and no one's going to beat them unless they decide and they don't want to play. And the Spurs them. are playing like the Spurs. Nobody's paying any attention to them, and they're going to be the number one seed in the and West the, again. And, the and, then, the are, are go- and then the yeah. Thunder are going to win the West. Yeah, and then the Lakers are just being dramatic. It's just so weird this year that they're the quote-unquote second team in L.A., like watching the Nick game, Our it's entire like, lives going up. They were always the one. Oh, That's forever, fine. forever. The Clippers have sucked. Um, but you know what? It's good to see. Yeah, though. it's good. To, it's good to see. But it was so weird when they put up the show in like during the Nick game of like the players getting like warmed up, and it's all oh, in L.A. The Clippers, and instead, it's normally ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time growing up was the Lakers in L.A. Of uh, that prime time game, that four o'clock slot here at least, and the one o'clock game over there, mm-hmm. and it's the Lakers, and it's like, oh, Chris Paul and the Clippers are gonna be playing the Thunder, 
It's like it was just so weird to see, but kudos to them. And if they do have real fans, uh, congrats to them because they definitely <laughs> deserve it. Um, Let's be real. They're not quote-unquote real fans. They're just Laker fans who aren't paying attention to the Lakers this year. Anyway, congrats to the real fans because I'm sure there's a few of them who are out there who would put themselves through those torture years. But coming to be a Met fan and another fan, I know their pain. Um, I would also like to give props to the to the Spurs once again. Like I said, are the number one seed in the West and lost a key member to that team last week, Tony, Tony Parker. Parker, who's out for a month, yet they're on now a four-game winning streak. Next man up. They're that savvy uh, veteran team. Beha- besides the great, great coaches. Mm-hmm. Great pop is one of them. You got you to consider him in the top, what, five? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do. Definitely. He's got, what, three rings, I think it is? Three, yes. Three rings, one seed every year, top three seed every year. I mean, they just... And you don't even pay attention to them. You don't no, even have to watch they're them. They're so quiet and sneaky. And they're just that old veteran team. Unfortunately, they don't have the speed to keep up with a team like the yeah. Heat and the Spurs. Uh, not the Spurs, the, the Hornets. Uh, the they, Thunder. Thunder, yeah. One of those names. You know what I was getting at. Yeah. Um, Correct. So, hopefully one day he'll have a team that's fast enough, but... Yeah. I think that when Duncan goes, he might yeah, actually be going too type that's thing. That's probably what's going to happen. Um... They just got to re- remake over and the whole change of guard. It'll type be of interesting thing. to see what type of franchise they become when he leaves and Duncan leaves, Ginobili and Parker leave as well. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens to them. Um, something like Dan and I mentioned before in our intro tonight, we mentioned that we're going to do a NCAA tournament bracket for yes. everybody. Um, I know I've been paying somewhat attention. Dan's somewhat paying attention. I know how it is with NCAA basketball. Yeah, I, you, I'm you not the biggest fan attention. of it because it, no one cares until like tournament time. Like, this is the time the of the year when you care. The when com- the, yeah, they're in the, the conference tournaments. Those are my favorite. Not just the conference tournament. It's more towards the end of when football season's over. That portion, like we talked yeah, about before, that end of February. You actually like there's nothing else to pay attention to yeah. besides hockey and the NBA. So you kind of pay attention, like you see the sports center and scores, you see the six, rankings, and there's over sixty five teams that make the tournament. So they're the most pointless um, regular season out of all the regular seasons in sports. Because yeah. I I heard an argument that they might as well just skip it. They do have conference tournaments based on <laughs> last year's conference tournament. You have like a little round robin. Yeah, that's you so. have like a a January. Early February round robin. Ready? Yeah. Hear me out. January, early February round robin. Conference only. Mm-hmm. Then you do your conference tournament. NCAA tournament. Yeah. Because then yeah. you miss out on, you're at the end of the NFL season. You're basically in the NFL playoffs. So you don't play on Sundays. But, that's but you, you need about. the other games because of the revenue for the college teams. Um, That's never going to happen. But you have to be the diehard M- uh, NCAA f- basketball fan. On, um, but it's I don't I don't I don't get interested. There's no way I'm gonna get amped up for a random game in the Big East if we know that ten teams are gonna make the tournament. Right. And it's like whatever, better seating. But once right now, once they get the conference tournaments going and everything like that, and it gets to the nitty gritty, that's when I start becoming a college basketball fan. The good thing about this year, I've kind of paid attention based on. ESPN. I've yeah. watched like Sports Center. I've like yeah. watched that, and I've noticed like the rankings somewhat, uh, especially because Michigan's been up in the top five most of mm-hmm. the year. They're at like eight right now. Um, one thing that's very interesting this year is it's not a year where it's that Duke, North Carolina. Duke's been knocked off every time they've lost. It's every team the who's road. been number one. That's no team has been the number one two weeks in a row except Indiana because all the top fives lost. Mm-hmm. So they had to leave the top five the same the f- next week. Yeah, so that's, that's how the, that's how diverse it's been. Yeah. in NCAA. Who who's your right now top four ranked teams? That My are, number one seeds. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna give you right now Gonzaga, who's been out of this world. Do I think they're finally ready to make that jump? No. Okay. But I don't think they're going to win a championship. I don't think they're going to make a deep run, but they'll still be a one. Okay. Um, 
Also, I think the winner of the Big Ten tournament is going to be a one because it's very – right now there might be a four-way tie at the top of that for the regular season championship between Michigan State, Michigan. Indiana, Indiana uh, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Okay. Which would make then Wisconsin, who's ranked like 20 in the country, the number one seed for the tournament. So I think whoever wins that tournament is going to get a one. I also think Louisville is going to get a one as long as they win the Big East tournament. And my other number one right now is probably Kansas. Kansas, okay. Um, I definitely think Indiana is going to be the number one overall seed in the whole tournament. Then Duke is going to be Duke. He's, they're just going to have their their Duke history be number two. Um, then I'm going to go with... Um, These are your four top one seeds. Yes. So you have Indiana and Duke. Indiana and Duke. They're going to have Georgetown win the NCAA. They're going to win the uh, Big East tournament. Okay, so Georgetown's your uh, th- uh, one. Yes. And then they're gonna, and then I'm gonna have Gonzaga since they are finally that team that could win a conference. The key with Gonzaga is don't lose in the unsuperior conference. It's not just that; it's more of in November, October, November when they first start the basketball se- college basketball season, mm-hmm. they play like good teams. Like yeah. they've played Duke in their pet early in the years, but then they go play their like conference and their conference just is, I mean, I think St. Mary's is in their conference and that's about it. But besides that, that's about it. Um, well, that's our picks this week. Actually, instead of Gonzaga, it's going to be Kansas because of the strength of scheduling. You think it's going to be Kansas? You instead think Kansas? Gonzaga, okay, yeah. Unless Gonzaga wins out. Yeah. Gonzaga. Um, so right now, top twenty-five, Gonzaga's won. Yeah, no, I know that. But. Um, so it's about I think it's about ten days from today is Selection Sunday, so that means I think it's two weeks till the tournament starts. Yeah. Right. So it's this Sunday, next Sunday, mm-hmm. when uh, the Selection Sunday comes out. So next week we'll give our take again on the top seeds. Yeah, because the tournaments are going to be coming around, and you're going to see. And next week's we the last have. show before the tournament. bracket is out. Um, also, just keep in mind, we're going to have the link on our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram. We'll post something. Uh, make sure you join our league. It's a public league, so anybody who doesn't even know about the show is going to be in it, we're hoping. Yeah. Uh, we hope people just see a free league and join it. Um, we hope you all join it as well. It's going to be a fun thing. Um, maybe we'll get uh, – maybe we'll see – Maybe we'll get a t-shirt for the winner. Okay, that works. Um, we'll put that on there. Get to an s and Podcast t-shirt. We'll message uh, the winner about it, and they'll send us their information and stuff. Um, if they want one, of course. Um, that's the basketball for this week. I got Enjoy. nothing else. You Go got Knicks, nah. Go Knicks. Go Knicks. Let's keep up the Knicks winning and talk about them again next week, hopefully on a good note. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Basketball Association or any of its affiliates. Welcome back, guys, to the s and Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, you've just heard Division 1.1 with a vengeance. Um, for the first time, Dan and I will talk a little baseball. baseball. Yeah. This isn't like the major baseball. We're just going to talk a little bit of baseball. No, we're just going to talk about the World Baseball World Classic um, and whether it's a good for the game of baseball or is it whatever. Um, there's two takes to the story. Um, if, if you guys don't know or... If don't follow baseball. Um, every few years, there's a baseball. It's every other. Yeah, it's every few. Four. Yeah, it's a few. Every few the last years. Last one was oh nine. Yeah. So there. no, no, closer than that. Oh nine, I think was the first one. Yeah, it was ten. It was no, just ten. eleven. Was it eleven? Oh nine, eleven, thirteen. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Anyway, who cares? Um, pretty much. Um, there's two camps of this. It's cool to see. Um. Pretty much the American League ball players uh, representing their countries, and there's some other countries that no one really knows about. Or Australia, really about. Australia, Israel, Italy, so just to name a few. And they'll have like 
dignitary baseball players who have some sort of uh, ancestry of those teams. Um, but it's and or the people who are just thinking it's a waste of time, and it's I mean, just look getting at, away from look spring at training. Brazil. You know who's managing Brazil? Who? Barry Larkin. Really? He has no background in Brazil. Yeah. But they wanted him because yeah. it puts a name on their team. Yeah. That's just silly. Um, and also, it brings the injury debate. Um, one bringing uh, Mark Teixeira. Um, right. Granted, it could have happened to anybody and in it any happened, batting practice. Right. It could have happened to him at Yankee, Yankee spring, spring training. training. Um, it was just one of those fluke, fluky things during BP. got clunked in the wrist. And he's out for eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. Um, it's just, it's just one of those things. Like I guess because we're spoiled Americans, per se, and we watch 162 baseball games a year, that we don't care. Like it's, uh, if the U when the USA games are going to be on, I will be watching it. But it's like whatever. I rather know, care, and know what the Mets are doing because I'm going to be putting my square interest in them this season. Right. So also another thing is that like you have all those teams like the Japanese teams and the Korean teams they play for this basically. Yeah, you and the USA team they should dominate but the last couple of times they didn't really care. They don't care. They they really they they say they care. Of course they care cuz they're professional baseball players and they want to rep, quote unquote represent their country. Of course they care in that terms of things, but their main goal is to help their major league team. I, I think, I think the pro the biggest problem is probably the timing. Yeah, because it's like right when it's really if you think about the right in the groove of spring training. It, it not only that, like think about like let's take David Wright for example. Yeah. Right now, if he's playing a spring training game, Correct. what is he? Two four in, innings. Yeah, two four innings max four. at this point. Yeah, first week of March, usually yeah. probably about two or three innings. Yeah. Um, so really, you're now going to play a game this week, and you're going to play nine innings. Yeah, they're going you're to be not sloppy. Playing. Yeah, they're, it's going to be sloppy. I think, personally, my personal opinion is you don't play it in any of the American stadiums. Yeah, well, they they're, they haven't, right? They're not. No, this they year. are. Yeah, oh, they are this year. Yeah, the, the right. finals are always in one of the American okay. stadiums. Okay. Um, and also they have it's San Francisco has a pool. It's the finals. Okay. The the USA pool round robins in Arizona. Okay. And then the second round for the USA that the USA would go to is in Miami. Because okay. they play the, the only Dominicans. important game. The only important game in that ballpark all season long. Exactly. Anyway, in my personal view, you can still use Miami. You can yeah. still use places like Texas. You can use local. You can use U.S. stadiums. Yeah. But play it in November. Do it before like free agency. Yeah, that would be cool. Like, like the end, the end of baseball season. Yeah, players are still in that groove. I mean, mm-hmm. some guys will be a month that off. Would definitely be a lot. But that cooler. would be when they're really training. Instead of the winter ball, where yeah. you don't get to see any of the players. Yeah, you could do it during then. People want to watch baseball. People would want to watch baseball, so that would be my personal opinion. You do it like late November, early have it end early December. That would be pretty cool. Right, because you, you're still in that groove of oh, I just played nine innings. I can go out there and play yeah. nine innings again. That will be will be when we get the complete overall. Right competition. now, now you have guys coming out that rusty. They haven't played in a couple months. There's no yeah. It's it's gonna be messy. Um, I just feel like that if they do it that time and of the, the injury end, factor sucks in it too. Right, you risk that huge injury. All it takes is like to share. One knock on the wrist, you you're missing the beginning of the yeah, season. Yeah, and that hurts for Yankee. To be fair, for does it hurt for Yankee fans? Because when was the last time he played? Had a good April. Oh, but <laughs> granted, he he starts off slow. But would you rather have Mark Teixeira or Travis Hafner on your starting lineup every day? Well, and he's not, well Hafner's not a Yankee. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, but he's not going to be starting. They've basically well, announced they had their lineup out there today. Which, which most people think will be the opening day. It was Euclid at first. And who's it? Uh, Nunez at third. Not Nunez, Knicks. Why, why don't they give Nunez a shot? I he know can't he, play. I know. Because they can't. might move him to the outfield. We'll they're see. Plan- they're they tur- also, yeah, they're turning him into Daniel Murphy. They're also planning to make him the next shortstop. Okay. So he might be on the Triple A team playing shortstop all nah, season. He he he's too. He has a major league get bad. He Plus, he's it. been playing shortstop because Jeter isn't playing. Well, that's true. Um. Anyway, um, 
He can't. There, his glove is still. He's still a perennial Gold Glove winner at first base, and he saves the Yankees a lot of runs. Granted, yes, his bats are very. He's slowing a little bit, but it's going to be tough to see the Yankees without Teixeira for the first few weeks of the season. So there's that debate. Of uh, injuries squaring up in the World Baseball Classic, but it could happen anywhere. It could easily happen in spring training. But you know, like it's like um, a lot of people with uh, Javon Clowney from South Carolina. A lot of people are saying he should take the year off, rest up, get ready for the for for the NFL draft next year. There's an interview with him, and somebody asked him what his view on that was, and you know what he said? He said, "I could be walking around my house, fall down on a flight of stairs, break my leg." Yeah. It's the same thing. If I take a year off, I break. If I get hurt some other way, people are just going to complain. Oh, you should have never taken a year off. Yeah, so no, it's an, there's it's really no those. win-win in that situation. Plus, the key with the World Baseball Classic is players want to represent their country. Uh, absolutely, that's what it is. I mean, one of the biggest things and, was Johan. Everybody, everybody should have the right. Look at Johan. Yeah. One of, well, he really wanted to play in the World Baseball yeah, Classic. Yeah, but good as well. thing the Mets said no but, but because the Mets, yeah, the Mets convinced they not invest to. so much money in these players. Right. The teams ultimately should have the right, the final say, like the Mets did. Right. So good job with the Mets on that. Um, um I like what like Davis said. They thought he said. Uh, he they asked him. Israel. No, they asked him if uh, he, he thought he'd get the call to be the first baseman for USA, uh, and he said that I'm not getting the call. There's 30 guys about before me that will get the call. <laughs> <laughs> like he knew he was not getting that call. Yeah. But anyway, um. I'm excited. We're going to be coming up with a couple of baseball shows. Yes. We have a couple of good goodies. We have a lot of baseball. Baseball is one of my guys. big passions, just like how it, football is. So stay tuned with us. Send us your preseason baseball questions. Mets, Yankees, all around the whole we'll, baseball We'll league, talk all baseball. We're not just uh, Mets and Yankees. And fans. if you have any fantasy questions, uh, we're here too. Yes, There's a lot of fantasy drafts. I know a couple start this weekend, a um, couple of fantasy leagues. Yeah. Um, any questions? Just let us yeah, know. Yeah, hit us I, up. Once I know again, we're not Matt, Matthew Barry and all no. them, but um, once again, you're listening to the S and D podcast um, on the Schmuck Sports Radio. Um, you're listening to Steve and Dan. Um, and there's our Sports Center break. I'm just kidding. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> anyway. We're not using Sports Center. Oops. Now to John I, I Anderson like, I, and I feel, uh, Stuart I feel Scott. like Matthew Barry getting text messages from his girlfriend. Wife. Um. <laughs> anyway, the Knicks are up. <laughs> Yay. Anyway, um, the in our baseball segment, um, it is it is early in spring training, so you really can't say. You know what I want to ask you? Sure. Right now, March sixth. No, Johan Santana. Okay. F- first five Mets starters. First five Mets starters. In order. In order. Okay. I got mine. Okay. All right. We're probably going to have the same five. We'll probably have the same, maybe a couple guys flip-flopped. All right. Um, right. I'm going with Nice, Markham, Harvey, G, and we'll have a floating fifth guy until Wheeler's 100% ready. Well, to Johan. Or Johan comes back. What? Or Johan comes back. Or like, well, you said if Johan doesn't come back. Well, no, no, he's coming back. I meant first five games he won't pitch. Gotcha. He's guaranteed uh, once. Okay. Okay. If he gets put on the DL, the gotcha. rule is you gotcha. have to miss gotcha. at least gotcha. one row. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, fine. Then if that's the case, um, all right, for the first five games, I have Nice, Markham, Harvey, Dylan G, and a call-up from the minors because Harvey's not going to be ready yet. You don't think Harvey's going to be ready? No, I mean, I mean Wheeler. I'm sorry. Wheeler. They're gonna they're gonna keep Wheeler gonna in keep the minor Wheeler, league. Pretty much uh, what until, Harvey they did with Harvey. Yeah, until arbitration, whatever it is. Yeah. So hopefully May, but if he doesn't come until the summer, that's fine with us. I'll give you my five. It's gonna be Nice opening day. I'm gonna have Harvey pitch game two. Cause he pitched well last year and earned it. I'm gonna have Markham pitch in game three. G four. And I'm going to give Jeremy Hefner the starting game five. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to give Hefner the starting game five. That's who would be starting game five because he was good last year. Someone I heard on uh, the fan the other day was trying to make an argument that Harvey deserves opening day if it's not Johan. He really doesn't, though. It's not that he doesn't. 
And in the future, he might get one. He will be the the eventually opening day starter for our Met for the Mets. Will he though, or is the plan to have Wheeler doing it for many? It's gonna be either or. one of the two. It, it right. doesn't matter. They're gonna it, be the one and two. But I years. love Harvey's makeup. I love Harvey's makeup. Yeah. That he will be the eventual number one. A B type guy. Yeah, like Harvey, I love his determination and everything. Like you could tell this whole season, he he doesn't like losing, but. Markham's the more accomplished starter at the moment, so mm-hmm. I would go Markham number two. Okay. That's just my humble opinion. Um, part of me feels like they're because they've actually shut Markham down recently. Yeah, they've been pushing him back because it is because yeah. of the World Baseball Classic. Exactly. It is an extended spring training. Mm-hmm. Um, so part of me feels like he's not going to be the way it's set up. I think they're trying to set it up is for him to pitch the third game. Well, yeah, you asked me for my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I know, so, I know, I know, but I'm, I'm not Terry Collins. I understand that, um, but that's my opinion. All right, next question, leadoff hitter. Um, <laughs> are you going Tejada leadoff, or do you have him as a two? I would my, have Ruben Tejada. Well, my yeah. honest opinion, my first four Mets coming up to bat. Is Tahada, Tahada Murphy, Murphy, Wright, right, and, and Nike. Yeah. And Nike. Yeah. Yeah. That's the standard. And it's the rest of the lineup that scares you. Right. You could arguably have John Buck as your five hitter. Good God. Um Well we'll see which Lucas Duda decides to play the rest of the spring training. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna talk more baseball in a couple weeks. We're gonna have a nice big right before the season starts, a nice big show for everybody. Um that was our take on the World Baseball Classic. Who do yeah. th- who's going to win? It's going to be one of the Asian teams because they actually care. I'm going to say so Dominican Japan. Republic. So Japan's going to win. I can see Japan, Dominican Republic finals. I can see that. All righty. Because the Dominicans don't actually care about their teams per se. They care about their country first, which is a good thing. And also they got they got a good timing because Jose Reyes went home run, is going home run happy Oh. Right now. And you know how Jose Reyes gets when he goes home run happy. He's going to go off, and then he's, whoop, poor Blue Jays. So, for the first month, Toronto, don't expect any home runs at <laughs> Jose Reyes. <laughs> uh, well, that was baseball for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to us for the first time doing baseball. Um, we're excited to continue talking baseball. And we'll talk more baseball next week. s and Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any of its affiliates. And welcome back to the SND Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, Division 1.1. That was with a vengeance by them. Um, Keep checking them out. Keep checking them out. They're coming out with a video like we said earlier in the show. Um, Brian, the drummer, is wearing our shirt during the video, so spot that when the video drops. Also, anybody in the Central Jersey area uh, that knows of Roxy and Dukes, they're having a CD release party on the 23rd in the middle of New Jersey. So enjoy that. Uh, Definitely hit them up. There's a there's a radio station, WSOU, the Street Patrol Night, it's called. Um, they're having, a, like I said, a launch of their CD. Uh, keep liking them on Facebook. Keep checking them out. We keep tweeting and posting all the stuff that they do. Uh, I believe they're also on Twitter. Um, I'm going to get the official name on that one for you guys and tweet it out. Um, also, check out schmucksports.com. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of great articles. Like I said, that assumption draft is up from Keith. Um, they're having a lot of fun doing. Um, I know he recently took Jamal Charles in like the fourth round. Huh. Um, also, uh, don't forget, next Thursday, Dan and I will be appearing at the Islander Road event, watching mm-hmm. the game, having some... Who are they even playing that night? Tampa? Florida? Oh, okay. Somebody in Florida. Right I here. think. Uh, All right, I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun. Also, keep looking out for us on YouTube. Um, don't forget, um, bot, a Podbean and... iTunes. iTunes and any other I, I Android market. 
uh, pet podcast programs that you listen to. Yes, please subscribe to us. Keep listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, also um, look out for March Madness pool that's going to be coming out shortly. Yes, we're going to post it's gonna be it. Free we actually charge and get as many people we use you want. We will actually be posting the link for that on uh, the seventh, just so people could start at least mm-hmm. signing up and putting their names in. And it's all set up to go. Just it's a matter of sharing it and having people join us. Exactly. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I know uh, Keith from Schmuck Sports is going to do it. Our friend Matt from a couple of weeks ago said he's down to do it. I'm sure Dan knows a bunch of people who'll do it. Um, I know a couple of people. We have a lot of great stuff g- planned for the future of the show as well. Um, so keep checking us out. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. iTunes. iTunes. Bye and, here's, is the, and let us know. Is Sports Yapper a good site? Yes, we would like an opinion on Sports Yapper. Do you think the SND podcast should join Sports Yapper? Um, we would love to hear your view. Uh, I've never used it. I don't know Neither Dan, have I. Dan's never used it. Um, so let's see. Let's see what you guys think on the site. If you guys think it's a good thing, I'll post that along with the video as a question, so you can comment on the page. Uh, like I said, check us out on Facebook. Check Dan out on Facebook. Check me out on Facebook. Check. Uh, Dan and I out on Twitter. Check the podcast out on Twitter. Check out the show on iTunes. Subscribe to it. Listen to it. All and Android. All, uh, thank Android you, stuff. Thank you for all your listening and support. Yes, thank you to everybody. Um, on a on a little bit of a sad note before we go, uh, for all you who do know. Uh, There's two deaths, actually. Two deaths. Uh, usually we don't talk wrestling, but we will. Uh, Paul Bear. Yeah. I don't know Imagine. his real name. Yeah, I for, uh, uh, Mr. Mooney. I don't remember his first name. Uh, striking me right passed now. Passed away last night. Yeah. He was a big part of The Undertaker. Grow- yeah, he was The Undertaker's we manager forever. Kane also in Mankind. Kane, Manca- Mankind. And also, uh, actually, while we were recording, it was announced on by TSN. Uh, if any of you know the hockey song, Stomping Tom Connors actually passed away. The good old hockey song. Uh, so... I'm going to play that for you guys now. I hope you guys have a good week. Have a great week. Enjoy the sports. Enjoy the sports.